Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Big Ideas on the Go. I'm happy to have as our guest today, Jonathan Albaum um, from ServiceNow. Uh, Jonathan, welcome to Big Ideas on the Go. Um, maybe just to kick things off, Jonathan, uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, your role at ServiceNow and in the federal um, market. Well, um, thanks for having me, Dimitri. It's great to be here. Uh, the role that I have at ServiceNow is really a tremendous, uh, tremendous role, and it builds on, you know, my work um, before I joined ServiceNow as a CIO in the federal government. A lot of what uh, I experienced when I worked in the federal government at USDA and uh, GSA, and then, uh, you know, with with uh, different offices and, and agencies uh, across government. You know, the problems that we have from one uh, agency to the other are often very similar. And um, a lot of what I do is help connect the solution service now offers to the problems that all agencies have. You know, and so often those problems are around, um, you know, from an IT modernization or a digital transformation perspective, it's, it's about data, it's connecting data and systems, it's connecting organizations, it's connecting people. Um, you know, so ServiceNow often serves as the connective tissue across these things that have become somewhat siloed. And a big challenge I had in government was making sure those things connected well. So my job at ServiceNow is often to go out there and tell the story and evangelize around how ServiceNow as a, uh, as a platform for, for digital transformation can really make a difference in how agencies uh, work with their data and work with their systems, work with their people to, to drive great mission outcomes. That's terrific. Now, you know, you've touched a little bit about kind of the, the kind of function around kind of modernize, modernization of the uh, federal IT infrastructure. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, that kind of modernization as it pertains to things like um, data privacy and, and data management more broadly. Sure. So, you know, um, from a data management perspective, uh, one a challenge that I that I saw firsthand as, as a CIO and subsequently, you know, after I've left government is, you know, we have so much data in our organizations, you know, volumes and volumes and volumes of data, and it's grown, um, you know, it grows exponentially now. And we don't always understand what's in all that data. We don't always know where it is. We don't really sometimes think about, uh, our, our, we don't prioritize, let me say, prioritize our, our data sets uh, so we can protect them in the best way possible for the kind of data that, you know, that we have. And, you know, I, I, I would ask, you um, agency officials, uh, when I had the chance uh, at USDA, I'd ask them, what's your most important data? And um, they could often answer that question, or at least, you know, their feeling their most important data might be data about farmers or ranchers, or maybe it was about uh, the food, uh, food stamp program now called SNAP, of course. Uh, and so that's good that they had a sense of what their most important data was, but I'd say, okay, do you know where that data is? And they say, well, it's in the, it's in the, uh, you know, the store tracking system, or it's in the, uh, you know, the, the system that manages the farmers is okay. So where, where, where is that? And they might know um, maybe where it was located or what the technology was. I said, okay, now how do you protect that data? And at that point, you know, I'd lose everybody in that kind of conversation. I, you know, just sort of drill down and offer some other questions like, okay, do you know where that data is backed up? Do you know where the copies of that data are? And, you know, before you know it, they, and they realized they didn't have a great understanding of the management practices around their data, these, you know, this, this uh, very strategic asset to drive, uh, to drive their mission. And something that has a lot of risk in it, if you lose data about farmers or school children or uh, uh, SNAP recipients at USDA, that's a really big deal. And, you know, when you, when you, fra when you think about, uh, you know, data management and the risk around uh, data, and you put it in business terms, you know, the failure to deliver on a mission or the impact on people's personal lives if their data were uh, to be lost and the impact on the department. Now you start to bring people uh, into the conversation who aren't, you know, traditionally IT people, they're users of systems or users of data, not the managers of the data. And I think to do the data management piece really well, you need to make it, you know, an organization-wide question question, because we all have a role in creating and, and managing um, data and, and, and the information the data, you know, the data represents uh, and the, the outcomes that it, that it can drive. So you have to think about these questions, you know, not just as technology questions, but as business questions and as, uh, you know, questions around program delivery in my experience. 
And look, and it's something we, we feel very strongly about here at Big ID as well, where we talk about kind of the importance of knowing your data as a, as a foundation to both security and also trusting your data for purposes of uh, BI and AI. So this kind of notion of KYD, I think, is of growing importance, whether it's in the cloud or even in uh, mm -hmm. legacy data centers. You know, yeah, you know, one thing on that kind of theme, you know, given your past um, role as a CIO in the federal government, and, and now your current role as CTO at ServiceNow Fed, talk a little bit about what, what other CIOs in the federal um, agency should be thinking about in terms of foundational capabilities. You know, what should, be, what should they be planning for the next fiscal year and the year after that? Yeah, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's, a really, that's a really good question. And I think, um, I, I always think that, you know, before you talk about the technology, you know, we already talked about the data. Um, but you really have to understand the, how the data moves through your organization and how the work flows through your organization. And, you know, you can buy all the great, great latest and greatest technologies to, to modernize and, you know, uh, move programs into, a, you know, a digital government. But if you don't really, first and foremost, understand the workflow uh, and think about uh, and think about digital transformation, digital acceleration as this opportunity to rethink and redesign processes so they work in uh, the 21st century. I think we're, we're, we're missing a big opportunity. You know, COVID was this real clarion call for digital transformation. Uh, we, we created a lot of processes uh, on the fly that made it possible for us to work in these remote environments. So, and, and to make it work um, uh, where we could serve customers remotely too. I, I always, I always uh, caution uh, CIOs that it's, uh, it's in their best interest to do a strategic pause and look at all these things that changed over the past 18 months and make sure that those new processes and approaches and the way the technologies were configured, that's how you want to continue on into the future. And if not, well, let's figure out what we need to do to become, uh, you know, for, for these things to be more stable and secure. And as you do those things, I think your, your question, then the answer to your question sort of becomes more apparent. Um, you know, what technologies do you, do you need? And I think as we move into the future of work and we have, uh, you know, we thought through these processes, we often come back to this need for uh, greater collaboration capabilities. And that's, that's both uh, tools that allow us to work in hybrid environments um, where teams are, you know, not just ge geographically dispersed, but we have some people in an office setting and some people in a home setting or, a, or a, you know, a, a, another kind of telework setting. And those, um, you know, those questions, I think, become harder because we, um, we, we've, we've gotten used to working. We're all in front of our individual screen, but when you throw some people in front of a conference, in a conference room, and you throw other people in front of computer screens, it's a little tricky. Um, so we need to be thinking about how we we're going to collaborate and communicate and making sure that our business applications, you know, get wired into these collaboration tools because people um, that government serves, they, I really do believe that they want to be um, interacted with in a way that is more similar to how their interactions occur with the private companies, the private businesses they work on. So it work with, so if you're, if you're, um, trying to deliver, you know, your best customer experience or your best employee experience, you really need to be thinking about some consumerization kinds of approaches, user experience, um, creating, you know, great experiences at every interaction is really important. Those things, um, I think are very important because they help to build trust over time. And we sort of talk about trust, you know, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of what we want to do in government over time, where we make it easy for people to interact across systems and interact across programs and across agencies, you know, comes back to questions around identity and making sure I can, you know, log in across systems across government and having uh, capabilities that make that easy and secure. So there's, there's a lot there. Um, but ultimately, it comes back to people, because I think it always comes back to people. It's how uh, federal employees have tools that make it easy to, for them to do their jobs and make it very uh, easy for them to provide great experience to the people they serve. Yeah, no, look, I, I think being clearly the nature of work is, has changed dramatically over the last uh, close to two years, I guess now. Um, you know, one of the other things that's changed, and I'm curious to get your take on it, is this kind of rush to the cloud. I know there's been some controversy in the Fed around who's going to get the, the uh, it's really in the military around the, 
uh, cloud cloud contracts. But I am I would like your thoughts on how does the cloud change things in terms of how CIOs approach not only uh, work and collaboration but more broadly um, digital transformation. Well, I think it's it's a great accelerator for digital transformation. If you you know you think back number of years when I when I first you know entered into um, the CIO community, you know we ran um, data centers and you know the USDA still runs uh, data centers um, and I think most organizations probably do, but you know that's all we did. And if you wanted to build a uh, you had a business requirement, you needed to build something. It was probably going to be uh, largely customized, uh, you know, a, a, a custom built app, and you're going to have to stand up infrastructure and you're going to have to do a lot of um, internal stuff before you can really demonstrate to your customer the fact that you have a functioning capability they can begin using like a, sort of a minimal viable product that might start helping them you know drive their agency forward and mission forward now you, you jump forward to the cloud and i can spin up environments very quickly and begin my development or i can use platform technologies like ServiceNow to you uh, utilize pre-built workflows or utilize our low code uh, capabilities and I can rapidly uh, create applications and mobile applications that people can use to, to do their jobs. And I think the, um, these concepts like digital transformation are really, you know, we've been transforming a long time. So think about digital acceleration, accelerating the move to digital, you know, really comes from the use of uh, uh, pre-built capability that can be customized, uh, tailored to a unique need, or a low-code platform that allows you to create something fast, and that speed makes a big difference because, you know, so many of these projects have failed over time, and they sometimes they fail because, you know, uh, they take too long, and people are, um, you know, they there's a lot of momentum in the beginning of a project, and we don't see anything for a while, and we sort of move on to something else, and when those projects don't necessarily have the support, and once they don't have the support, they you know, sometimes they can wither. And uh, so I do think that there's an expectation in, um, in the in the public and in our agencies that we can deliver things fast. And, you know, cloud and uh, platforms like ServiceNow really help with that. And, and what do you see in terms of getting kind of consistent um, uh, strategy across all the agencies? So, you know, a lot of the conversation today has been very kind of agency specific and what should CIOs and, and technology leadership. But do you expect standardization across departments, across agencies? Well, I think there's a, there, are, there are definitely times where standardization um, will help. Uh, it's, it's, it's never, it's, but, you know, all of our agencies and sub-agencies within departments and, uh, you know, offices within eight sub-agencies and so on and so forth, there's always some, some differences, some nuance that make, you know, a completely standard approach uh, complex, but we do know that there are times where we have very similar requirements. And if we can choose a common starting point, or maybe a few starting points, maybe across a couple of products, uh, you can go a lot faster and we can go faster together. You know, one example that I've been involved in recently is um, the vaccine status tracking requirements that all federal agencies have right now. You know, it's, as we as we talk now, we're, we're getting close to the date by uh, when federal employees will need to be fully vaccinated. Well, for agencies to um, to know the status of their employee population and any related risk, they have to track um, when their employees receive their vaccinations and manage the vaccination status cards and whatnot. And all those agencies are doing exactly the same thing. It's 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 a very same requirement with some differences around the edges about maybe how they do reviews or approvals or other kinds of things. And we, we've been fortunate to work with uh, the Office of Management and Budget and the Federal CIO Council to um, and I don't know, 10 to 15 different agencies that are customers of ServiceNow's vaccine tracking capability to work on this together and to think about the requirements together and implement this uh, together. So we're not um, spinning up you know, several different versions of the same kind of capability. And, you know, when you have a, a platform like ServiceNow, we build apps on the platform, we can build and maintain a vaccine status tracking application that keeps up to date with the requirements as, as they evolve. And we get, the, we get the same requirements across all the agencies, we have a standardized approach. So uh, for all these agencies to, to use, and they can get there, they get there fast. So there are definitely going to be cases where standardization and uh, very similar approaches, uh, you know, get us uh, to the endpoint faster than we could do it individually, uh, even using the same technology. But more often than not, we're going to have a lot of uh, variation in different different um, 
differences to how we how we do things. So we have to be thoughtful about when we work together as a big group and when we, uh, you know, let the agency, um, the uniqueness of our agency, sort of sort of rule the equation there. Yeah. So I guess I guess the moral of the story is that the platform itself inherently lends itself to. Um, uh, creating kind of cross-agency uh, solutions in the sense that there's reuse and so forth, but again, it could still be bespoke. Yeah, you, need to, you need to know when, he, when to, when to uh, be focused on common and reuse and, and, and when a situation deserves something a little more unique. And so I think maybe more of an art than a science, but um, the ability is there, and I think that's the most important point. Yeah, no, agreed. Uh, maybe just to kind of wrap things up, you know, I, I would like to get your thoughts on based on kind of what you're seeing, and obviously we're coming through a very tumultuous kind of two years, um, what do the next two years look like, assuming that there's no other pandemics that uh, rear their heads? What are you seeing as kind of major trends, both from an IT standpoint, but also from a data standpoint? Sure, I think, um, and I think the idea of the digital citizen is going to be very important in digital government and serving, serving, um, serving people uh, the way they in, in government, the way they are served in a private sector, uh, you know, business, you know, there's going to be, uh, a real, I think a focus on creating commercial like experiences in, in government agencies and the, um, you know, the, the elements of this that I think, you know, are really intriguing is, you know, um, a proactive approach to serving customers. I, I, we like to talk about it as anticipatory government. You know, we know a lot about the people we serve in our agencies. And if we can use that data um, in a way that gives us the ability to uh, do a little prediction about a service or a program that might be beneficial, uh, we can reach out and, you know, give somebody a, um, you know, a, a heads up that you might qualify for a program you should consider applying. Or maybe we can uh, proactively go out and uh, perform a service uh, internally or externally, that might be a benefit to uh, to the public. So thinking about anticip anticipating the needs, using data, using predictive technologies, AI, ML kinds of things, I think is going to be something that we talk about a lot. And then I also think that the, um, you know, we're at a point now where we have so many uh, great technologies available to agencies. And, you know, from a ServiceNow perspective, these all run on the ServiceNow platform, things like um, RPA or, um, you know, the AI ML kinds of capabilities I, I mentioned before, workflow, process binding, all these things exist. And if you can, they're all great individual technologies, but in a sense, these technologies are like uh, Legos. I can put them together in, you know, unique ways and create something that, you know, doesn't, uh, hasn't existed before. And if we think about this in a um, hyper automation kind of, kind of way that I can connect all these technologies to drive an outcome um, and automate an outcome internally or externally, I can now take people who were involved in, you know, different uh, manual processes along the way and, you know, assign them to higher value work. We always like to, you know, have our federal employees, and, you know, be focused on the things that um, really they do best, uh, the analysis, decision-making kinds of things. And but there's a lot of steps along the way. I think that we can, we can automate. We really focused on this end and automation using, you know, various capabilities that, you know, we have, we just have to be able to put them together. And in a tool like ServiceNow, it serves as a, you know, control tower, if you will, for these various capabilities and can really drive that, um, that, that digital experience and, and, and automate things. And, and I think that lastly, that leads to this uh, opportunity for um, hyper-personalization. You know, if we really understand our processes, we really understand our data, uh, we can anticipate things people we need, like we said, we can automate things like I described, but really that creates the opportunity for a really tailored experience for that individual. Um, and, you know, that is the kind of thing that I think is really big, because the better I can serve that person, uh, the more trust I think they'll have in, in my agency's ability to serve them. And that increases over time their, their trust in government and organizations and institutions. And I think that's really important for where we are as a society right now. We know that trust in uh, government and, inst and institutions is low. I think using these technologies that um, we have available, the data we have available to provide great experiences and show people that in government we can do uh, we can do big things like uh, create a vaccine for COVID, but we can also do smaller things, which is, you know, know when they, um, you know, they need a, to do sign up for a program and help them through that process and make it a great experience. 
the totality of all that over time changes the way people think about their government. Uh, I believe they, I believe that it will. And I think those are really important activities to, you know, re so people become a little more reflective of the way government serves them, the value they get from it. And uh, it's an institution that, you know, can be uh, trusted and because it's providing them, you know, real value and opportunity in their lives. No, look, I, I love it and I couldn't agree more. I think the the idea of bringing kind of greater trust and transparency to to the citizen through this kind of digital um, uh, personalization on the second hand, kind of providing more automation on the back end services to support that uh, clearly needs to be where, where government goes. Like you said, I think if uh, one of the outcomes is a closer um, a closer connection between the citizen and the government that supports them. I think we all we all win. Um, so so on that note, uh, Jonathan, uh, thank you again for coming on the show and the podcast. Really appreciate it. You've been a terrific guest. I really liked uh, um, your point of view and some of the things you you share with the audience. Um, so thank you again. Um, uh, we appreciate you coming. And then uh, for our listeners, just want to remind them to, to please subscribe to Big Ideas on the Go and uh, also leave reviews wherever you download and listen to podcasts. So Jonathan, with that, we'll let you go. Have a great weekend. And thank you again for joining us. It was great to be here. Thank you.